Heather, a lifelong Austinite and lover of art, culture, and local creative communities. Join me on a quest to interview engaging artists working with a variety of media, from paints, sculptures, fabrics, theatrics. Come along as we discover the meaning of blank canvas ATX. Karen Woodward, who's at the Canopy Studios in uh, number 107 is her studio number. Thanks for having us in your studio. We are really impressed already the minute I walked in with the level of, of detail and sophistication with such tiny, tiny figurines. Before we talk about all your amazing art, we'd love to kind of get to know you a little bit. Well, I was born in New York and then I spent most of my life uh, growing up in Dallas. Then I went to school at UT. So the first time I moved to Austin was in 19, 1989. Mm. So I went to school here, lived in a few different cities and then ended up moving back here in 2010. Before I moved here, I was living in St. Louis, where I was teaching at a school called the Craft Alliance Center for Art and Design. Mm -hmm. And I taught uh, glass classes there for about 10 years. And I ended up running the department there. And then um, we moved here, and then I've just been an independent artist. When I started out showing my work, I always showed in what I call underground studios. It's always just a weird place that got popped up and kids put together art shows. When you were in art school, when you were learning how to be you as an artist, who were some of your major influences? It's not anyone in particular, but it's when I see somebody making art and when I can tell by looking at their art that it's authentic and it's like it doesn't need to appear serious to be meaningful. Mm. That kind of art. I, I mean, I like humor and irony in art. Artists like that are a major influence on me, and I see it all over. He's, uh, he looks like he's really happy about doing some yoga. And there's a baby hot dog. It's a, it's a hot dog in a swaddle bun. This one has a slider coming out of its head. It's like this one's tired of eating junk food. I like this guy. This is kind of the, this is still, this is a side, I call this the side liquor. And I think, I think he's gonna go with the ice cream cone. I went to graduate school at WashU for sculpture because I thought uh, I did want to teach art. And when I graduated, I was making jewelry. Mm. Okay, so, so I wanted to um, find out how to fuse glass to make um, glass cabochons to set into jewelry. And as luck would have it or not have it, I signed up for the wrong class. <laughs> and I, I, I was like, what? It was, it was torchwork glass. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, I, I don't want to do this. But it was like a, I don't know, a four or five week class. And so I finished the class and I was like, I was like oh, this is, pretty, this is pretty easy. And then uh, within six months of taking that class, I was teaching it. Oh my gosh. And then that summer I was teaching um, all the kids' summer camps. And then for the next 10 years, that's all I was doing. How do you come up with the images themselves? Like, is it something that you draw beforehand or do you do it in process? It's some of both. I'd say this work first started out, I think I had been teaching classes and working from nine in the morning till nine at night. It was like a 12 hour day. And 
it's always, the ideas always happen late at night when things get weird. It's like you haven't gone to sleep yet and then the, the strange things happen. That's when I first made my first sculpture like this. But some, sometimes I start off with a drawing and I know exactly what I want to make and I get the proportions correct. But other times it's more intuitive where I know generally how I want to go, but then I just let the materials take over a little bit and I make some parts molten and, and let it move around. Usually I'm surprised when I pull it out of the kiln the next day. The glass moves really fast when it's molten. If I'm not paying attention, if I'm reaching for something and I have the piece of glass and the torch and I look up, the face is gone. Oh no. And so, yeah. so sometimes you can get really lucky and get an awesome face expression, but yeah. and sometimes it just, sometimes it turns out really weird. People who look at my art for a long time, all of a sudden it dawns on them. They're like, they're like, you know, I've noticed you have a lot of chickens in your work. When I was growing up, instead of having a, a dog or a cat, um, I had a pet chicken. So um, that always had uh, an impact in, in my life. But there's this, this was the creature that I grew up with. Like I'll start off with the installation. I'll find where the center is, and then that's that's where the chicken goes. So this is a purple chicken. And I usually do a chicken count because I don't, I don't, I don't keep track. There's also a chicken over here, mm -hmm. and then there's also this character here. It's the existential chicken man. Is he a man? Is he a chicken? He doesn't know. They do all have um, names or purposes. This one has like it's a fish tank monster brain. So this one has a fashionable pink hat. Mm -hmm. This guy, I felt like he needed a belt, and so he's got a belt. So this one actually has, um, these are little bonus uh, neurological particles. It nothing is. is painted. No, nothing is painted. That's fascinating. That's what people say, do you paint it? I'm like, no. All of the glass comes from the factory. Uh, it's, it comes from a factory in Murano. Yeah. So this is Italian glass. This, this technique is actually, you, if you went back 3,000 years, you could say it's a Chinese technique. If you go more recent history, you could say flame working is an Italian technique. It's almost like there's a, uh, almost like a battle for one's attention in the outside world. And like to really be brave enough to be an artist means you have to just say n no you have to, and lot. it's hard. It's hard. It's hard when you have when you have a lot of responsibilities. You got to take care of your kid. You got to do these things. It's you know you do have responsibilities, but you have to like force yourself to have that time. Mm -hmm. And the, and if you don't give yourself that time, then nothing's going to happen. So what I do is on a good work day where I'm like, oh, I know I'm going to get at least four hours. Um, I plug my phone in in the house. Leave it there. I'm distracted by nothing. I go into my studio and work, and I don't have anything, anything to distract me. And so, and so that's going into a room of your own. It's like take, removing all of the distractions. There's so much happening here in Austin. Every time I find out about something that's happening in the art scene, I feel like, oh, I just got lucky. That new gallery that opened, or you know, it's, it's, in somebody's, it's in somebody's house, or it's in their closet. I get on social media and I start to learn about all these people in Austin everywhere that are doing so many cool creative things. I find out about all these awesome little things happening all over town and these projects that people are doing. I guess not little, but big projects. I'm like, how did I not know about this? Austin's treated me pretty well. Um, I think I contribute to making things weird. <laughs> Blank canvas. Well, I'm not actually working on a canvas, but to me, the idea of a blank canvas, I'd say it's more freedom. So it's freedom, I, and that freedom involves time. So maybe at least four hours of freedom, <laughs> just being practical. It's freedom from um, worrying about, like let's say if you have stuff to do at home, um, 
if you have domestic things, freedom from worrying about material things, freedom from worrying about something too intellectual. It's just you can tune the rest of your life out. And the blank canvas to me would just be a certain amount of time where you could just be creative and just have freedom. So here we are in the fabulous home of an artist who I have been admiring for a while now, and I would love for him to introduce himself to the Blank Canvas audience. So who might you be, sir? Well, hello Blank Canvas. My name is Roni Zulu. I am an artist, particularly an oil painter. I grew up in a small town, Terre Haute, Indiana, and my early boy years were spent there and then eventually ended up in Los Angeles. I also uh, was educated in the Ringling School of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida, and then after that I studied in various ateliers of various master artists uh, from here and from uh, Florence. My major was graphic design and commercial illustration had nothing to do with fine art. After leaving Ringling, I got jobs as a graphic designer, commercial illustrator, and did very well, and found that it just didn't feed my soul. Some people that's great for, uh, but for me, I was drawing pictures on packages to sell a product. Nobody cared about the emotional content and all the you know romanticism that artists like to put into their work. No, it was like, draw this picture so it'll sell this candy bar. And after a while, I just couldn't do it anymore. And that's when I really dove down the fine art rabbit hole. So I left Ringling early mm -hmm. and uh, sought out various masters and showed them my uh, portfolio of sketches and what few, very few paintings I had done and was luckily accepted and that's where uh, my skills were really honed uh, under individual tutelage as opposed to the classroom setting. When you uh, talk about the old masters, it's generally a uh, classical figurative and portraiture style. Uh, mainly, and that's what I learned. When you think of uh, Da Vinci, uh, Michelangelo, Raphael, that style of painting. The attention to detail always fascinated me. For one, just the physical ability to be able to take puddles of pigment and transform them into these absolutely beautiful, stunning works of art. I, I just thought that was amazing. And I've always been fascinated with people. You'll probably notice that's all I paint. And portraiture was the painting of the day. So I was very attracted to the Renaissance style. I was fortunate when I was a young boy, uh, one of my early art instructors, uh, art teacher, had a book and it was the complete works of Michelangelo. And she let me borrow that book, which became my Bible. I didn't completely understand the context of the work, but just visually, it just blew me away. And uh, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. There are two major influences. One is Salvador Dali. And the other, which is very heavy, is Caravaggio. He is the biggest influence. His work is so moody. A lot of his figures emerged out of the dark, as opposed to these well-lit heavenly scenes. He took art into this moody place, a very sultry, dark, velvety. That pulled me a little much from the traditional Renaissance style into this, oh, we can really dig down into that part of people that you don't see. And, show some of that, mm -hmm. just the drama of it. Mm. And that has just stuck with me. Dali was one of the major influences because 
even though I loved Michelangelo and all the artists that you're used to in the Renaissance period and their technical prowess, all of a sudden comes Dali who has that but twists it. He takes, re he can paint very realistically but put things in a context that can't possibly happen. And that kind of broke my brain a little bit. Mm. It's apparent in my work today, uh, my surrealism. It's not as extreme as Dali's uh, with his very extended uh, appendages and melting clocks and bodies, but you will see in my painting, like let's say, it could be simple as a coffee cup levitating off a table and spilling. That could never happen, but it's still surrealistic because I believe that if I'm gonna paint someone, there's part of them that we see that I paint, but there's so much, as we all know, parts of people we don't see, and the only way I can convey that is with a touch of surrealism. From the moment I started painting, the first time I picked up a paintbrush, it took about six years or so before I really found my signature, this is me. Mm. I believe that if I paint like this, and allow myself to paint like this, the people will see that is Zulu. I would say that 90% of what you see on one of my paintings is absolutely planned out, except for a lot of the symbols. I allow them to come a lot of times as I paint. I'm in a definitely different mode yeah. when I'm accessing that. I, I build in an environment that um, would <laughs> people would find very interesting it, let's just say if I'm up there in my studio, which my wife calls the tower, she tells people, don't go up to the tower if you hear opera really loud. <laughs> <laughs> Usually the people I paint, I get to know before I paint them. There has to be their story. So I don't paint people randomly just to paint them. Let's say in a classroom when you learn to paint, of course you paint the model. But it comes down to my work, I truly want to tell that person's story. And also my view of that person. <laughs> The fire of chaos is the battle in here between sanity and insanity. That's where the fire is. And that I play with a lot. And I'm glad it stays in here and not in the physical realm. It stays in here and there. Because I can't really allow that out here. Austin is changing really rapidly right now. And I think the art scene is too. I think Austin has a history of more, I would call a folk art kind of scene, kind of hands-on by the people, not so highbrow. It's like art for the people by the people. I'm really excited that Austin is very open. The art scene is almost like a child that has big eyes, it can paint and draw, but it sees other things and it's like, what is that? As opposed to like, it's not Austin, we don't want it. No, it's a very welcoming scene and that I like a lot. <laughs> to me as an artist, a blank canvas is the most glorious, simultaneously the most horrifying thing in the world. Everything you are, the accumulation of all you've been as an artist and as a person is gonna happen when you go to that canvas. You know that's what you're gonna be judged on. But also, it's infinite possibility. And that's what's awesome.
like this blank canvas thing. 